Hello, my creative friends, and welcome to another episode of The Daily Prompt. This is Tuesday. That makes this Technique Tuesday, at least <laughs> while we're doing these theme days of the week. Today, I want to talk about uh, what I had this idea for, and uh, I'm not sure quite which way I want to explore it, is I wanted to sort of take you through the basics of storytelling, the basics of screenwriting, um, so that we really, we, we cover some of the basic techniques along the way. I, I'm not sure if I want to do it as a as a sequential series of episodes, or if I want to do it one each week through the Technique Tuesday. We'll probably start with this one, and then let me know in the comments below if you want to do this as a sequential um, as a sequential series of episodes, or if you'd rather see this sort of unfold over time. We still like the Mindset Mondays, we still like the Throwback Thursdays, and the Fast Fridays, and the Q&A, and all that stuff. So... I need your feedback on that one, <laughs> which by the way, while we're at it, if you haven't subscribed already, click the subscribe button, click the bell uh, to get notified when new stuff is released. Um, <laughs> hit us up on Instagram, hit us up on Twitter, hit us up on Facebook. Now then, let's get into it. Um, today's, what I want to talk about in the Technique Tuesday today is kind of the core technique of them all, which is, I want to talk about the three-act structure. Now, uh, I have a sort of long-standing um, sort of contrarian point of view that not all stories have to be three-act structure stories. Now, the three-act structure, when it was sort of really codified by Sid Field in the book Screenplay um, back in the 80s, uh, really sort of redefined how Hollywood looked at story structure and everything sort of became imposed. This three act structure became imposed upon pretty much every story. Now there's a reason why the three act structure is as ubiquitous as it is, why so many um, storyteller, storytelling teachers and script writing teachers uh, use it as their Bible more or less. And that's because it does most closely reflect how the human experience works. The hero's journey, the that sort of mythic progress through. Where ultimately what we have is, is all stories, more or less, have a beginning, a middle, and an end. That which at in the three-act structure gets broken down into setup, conflict, and resolution. So the setup, the beginning, is the, fir the first act of your story is, takes up about 25% of your story. The second act takes up about 50% of your story. That's the conflict. That's the escalating conflict of your story. And then the final act, the, thir the third act, is the resolution of your story. Again, 25-ish percent of your story. It's the resolution, the ending, where it all comes to a climax, and we see whether the character did or did not get the thing that they set out to achieve. Now, I'm a big believer that story is a wide open is a wide open form that not all stories need to follow the three act structure. That in fact we can create a four act structure where each act follows a season, the four seasons of the earth going around the sun, right? So that those seasons can be metaphorical story-wise. In a television series that's a one-hour drama that's written to the commercials, you basically have four acts in the story there. The idea that a three-act structure story is the be-all, end-all um, is, is, I think, in many ways limiting to the writer because ultimately... You need to find the story, the structure, the the expression of your idea or what you're trying to say that's perfect for your idea. So that's why the system that I built, and again, I'm not, I don't want to fixate on that, but the system that I built is not about writing a three-act structure story. It's about taking you through the process of story development, writing, rewriting, and getting to the final destination. You can use a three-act structure story in it. We teach that. I teach you how to use to write other structures as well. But my point being that if you fixate on and make and, and use some of these formulas that tell you pretty much what has to happen where in your story, it's very limiting. It's taking every idea and trying to shoehorn it into one possible approach. So as I talk about the three-act structure here, and we've got about five more minutes left if I'm to hit the 10-minute deadline, that's about all the time we really need to cover what the three-act structure is about. So let me jump into it. So basically, we have the beginning, the middle, and the end. We have setup, conflict, resolution. What essentially the, the overall story is going to be about is a character has some sort of deficiency in some way. They're, they're beginning... They need to learn something along the way. And the, the the goal that they have for themselves, the thing that they want to achieve, that external 
objective. They want to win the race. They want to win the affection of the other person. They want to become president. They Whatever it might be. That goal is the thing that sets them out on the path to the, to the process. To, that's what the story is going to be about externally. But through them trying to achieve that, they're going to learn something about themselves at the end so that when you have the final story climax, the final battle, the final resolution, we see how the character has changed. I mentioned in previous episodes that change, the cha- whatever something is going to change in pretty much every story, and that change is what conveys the meaning or the purpose or the point of the story. So if you want to make some message story about you want to say this is how the world should be, you need to demonstrate that through a story that shows us a character externally following that path, internally learning something new, and that change demonstrating the the point or the purpose or the message of the story. So the way that actually works is... the. Fr- in the first act, we at the beginning of the first act, we see the character in their normal life in some way. Then there's this event called the inciting incident where something happens that throws their life in a different direction. That thing can be as simple as uh, examples that screenwriting teachers have used in the past are a flat tire uh, in the movie Sunset Boulevard. The flat tire ends up, he has to pull over to this house, which is where he meets the the uh, the lady who was the, the star from a bygone era. It, it could be something Thing as you know, big as the, the character gets a promotion, uh, or a promotion is not usually a. Uh, It needs to be something that is different to the normal trajectory of the person's life. So if the person's pursuing something normally and they get that thing, the the inciting incident hasn't really taken them in a new direction. So if a character is coming home from uh, from a long trip and they go to put their key in the door and they look up and realize their house is burned down, that's an inciting incident. Now they have to respond and react to that inciting incident. They have to figure out what's going on, what circumstances have led to that situation and as they sort of piece together what's happened here or they initially react to it all of a sudden something is going to happen something is going to come up that shows them a goal that they're going to want or need to pursue for themselves that'll be the plot point one the the first act twist the end of the first act that leads us into the second act the end of the first act closes off the story of the first act so in my example i always use uh, the guy the guy finds that his house is burned down he's responding and reacting to it as he responds and reacts to it he pieces the puzzle together and then he realizes his missus burned the house down well now suddenly the story becomes about find her get her <laughs> figure out why she did this All that stuff, right? So then that's what your second act becomes about. So the second act is the meat of your story. The second act is the primary the primary of your story. And as the character goes to try to pursue whatever it is, the as they try to get that thing, we have what are known as progressive complications. So as they move through the story, trying to figure this out or get where they're trying to go, obstacles get in their way. And as those obstacles get in their way, it's more and more of a hurdle to overcome. Now, the reason you want that is because as the character's overcoming the hurdles and the objections along the the, the obstacles along the way, that, per, that the character has to change. They have to grow. They have to become something stronger, better, different to what they were initially. And that's how we're going to show the change over the course of the story. Now, there's a lot more to it, but as the as the character goes through that process and the obstacles build, we get highs and we get lows. We get we get all the way down to <laughs> towards the end of the second act. We get to that point where all hope is lost. And then there's a new opportunity that appears and helps them sort of pursue that direction. Something's going to happen at the end of act Two, that's going to close out this part of the journey that's going to be the act two twist the plot second plot point that spins us into the third act and the third act is really about okay all that i was trying to do before push that aside because now i know how to achieve that and it's ultimately usually going to be a final battle between uh, the good guy and the bad guy or the character and whatever obstacle roadblock was getting in their way something where now they've got all the skills that, they, that they've built throughout this process 
process as those um, progressive complications have challenged them personally. We get to the point where they're ready for this final battle. And as they move towards this, there's something that becomes this sort of catalyst that leads to the story climax, which is the final battle between good and evil or whatever it is that's going to determine whether or not they get their goal, they overcome their obstacle, they over overcome their problem, they achieve the thing, whatever it might be. And then that final battle, that final confrontation, is a demonstration of the thing that they needed along the way so that we see the character change. Make sense? So at the end of that, then we see the, the denouement, is what it's called, <laughs> where we see the character in their new life, their new situation, and we're able to see that change. And the meaning of the story, the message, comes across through that. If you take this basic three-act structure, and I know we've gone over time here, but if you take that basic three-act structure and you, and you apply it to movies, you'll probably find that it fits 50 to 70 percent of all stories. Notice it doesn't fit all stories, and notice that it, that's not what it has to be. But one of the reasons that Hollywood tends to think that this is the way it has to be is because this reflects how life works. We have an idea, something happens in our life, it changes our tra trajectory as we move, there's obstacles, something opens up a new opportunity as we go to that, it's harder than we thought it was going to be. We overcome obstacles as we move along through that process, eventually we learn what we need, we grow, we change, we hit that final, that we have that final battle, which is more a story thing than a real life thing because it doesn't usually come together as nice and neatly and succinctly as it does in a story. But in a story, we can demonstrate that change through that final climax. So because it reflects the normal human experience, we often think that that's the way a story must be told. It's not. That is one structure for story. It's probably the most common, probably the most ubiquitous, but... Um, but ultimately, ultimately, it is a story structure. So my belief, my approach, is that we want to find the structure that's most suitable to the idea that you're trying to tell. Now, if you're trying to tell a simple story about goals versus needs, about what what we need to do in life to become better people and sort of overcome those kinds of obstacles, then that is definitely the story structure that you're going to want to follow. And there's there's n absolutely nothing wrong with that. We just have to understand that the audience understands this intuitively at this point. As I've been sharing this with you, if this is new to you, you're probably going, oh yeah, yeah I've seen that in, in movies before. It's because we're very familiar with that form. So in order to delight and surprise an audience, we need to go above and beyond just what we already, we can't have something that's predictable or formulaic or cliche. So that's the big challenge with the three-act structure is finding new creative, creative ways to reveal things and explore story points without taking the audience on that. So we'll address some of that stuff in episodes ahead. But I did want for this Technique Tuesday to start out with structure. And if you understand that every story has a structure, I've talked about the three act structure, but every story has a structure. If you understand that, then that's gonna be the spine and the core upon which you're going to build the story that you ultimately build. So. I think I've gone on a little bit long today, so I'm going to leave it there. But ultimately, I hope this helps you. If you are new to this and you're sort of discovering the stuff along the way, this is just the faintest possible <laughs> introduction to the stuff. We obviously go way deeper into it in Fast Screenplay. I do hope that you would join me there because there's no way for me to cover all this stuff here. <laughs> but whatever you do, try to apply this to your own work. Try to think about how your story is structured. Is it structured this way? If not... Can, it be, can this structure help you achieve what you're trying to achieve? If it doesn't quite, if it doesn't seem to fit, don't make it fit. There are other structures, there are other ways to go about it. You have to find or maybe even design and invent the structure that's right for your story. It's going to convey the message, the point, the purpose of your story. So that is today's daily prompt. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.